Okay, so the topic of this video today is going to be RNA and the process of transcription. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's begin to break down the process of transcription, the process of making RNA. In yellow, that's a gene pretend, a segment of our DNA with coded instructions to build a protein. The A's, T's, C's, and G's, those are the instructions. And during transcription, those DNA uh, A, T, C's, and G's are going to be copied into RNA. And so this is going to begin with an enzyme called RNA polymerase. This weirdly shaped object right here is going to be symbolic of RNA polymerase. And it's going to start to separate the DNA helix. It's going to attach itself to the DNA and it's, going to, and it's going to start to pry open the A's from the T's and the C's from the G's. Here we go. As RNA polymerase continues down the double helix, it gets unzipped even further. So now that we've unzipped the DNA a little bit, we can move on to step number two. Free floating RNA nucleotides are going to match with the DNA. So RNA polymerase, the enzyme, it will pry open the DNA and then transcription will happen on only one of the two DNA strands. We're going to do transcription on the bottom strand. So notice how the first letter on the bottom is the yellow T. And so in floats an A for adenine, A bonds to T. We're used to seeing that. Now the next one is an A. You might expect the T to float in next, but now it's actually it's a U for uracil because we're making RNA. RNA has the letters A, U, C, and G. There's not going to be any of my T's, any, there's not going to be any T's that float in when we do transcription. The third letter is a C, so in floats a G. The next one is a G, so in floats a C. And we have begun the process of transcribing and making a copy of the DNA. We're going to make a copy of the DNA into RNA. So notice that the enzyme just cut open more of the DNA helix, and that, is ex that has exposed more, uh, uh, more room to do transcription. So notice how an A is floating in. Notice how a G is floating in. Free-floating nucleotides are going to match to the exposed DNA. And again, you may have been exposing a, uh, you may have been expecting a T just now, but notice how U for uracil came in because we're making RNA. Now in a moment, you're going to see why some letters are capitalized and others are lowercase. That's not important right now. You'll see that in a little bit. And so notice how the enzyme keeps cutting open the DNA and then nucleotides, free floating nucleotides are coming on in and bonding. Well, let's add another step to transcription. Step three, eventually near the back end, near the left in this case, the RNA is going to break free. So the RNA is beginning to break free, but the enzyme RNA polymerase is going to keep unzipping the DNA. And now that the DNA has been unzipped some more, we can add some more RNA nucleotides. A C floats in. Another C floats in, a G floats in, another G floats in. So we're performing transcription and we're making RNA. And eventually the RNA, uh, the, the red R, reddish brownish RNA is going to continue to break away. And now also I want to add that, you know, the DNA will begin to recombine. The yellow unzipped DNA at the left will begin to recombine. And as we continue through the process, DNA on the right hand side is going to continue to be unzipped. And now we can add more nucleotides. Can you predict what's next? A G. What comes after this? An A. What comes after that? A C. What comes next? An A. And what comes next? A U. Well, eventually the RNA in reddish brown is going to continue to break away. And the DNA in yellow is going to continue to rezip. And now at, that we're at the final three nucleotides, uh, we're going to start to wrap this up. So the RNA is going to continue to break away. And the DNA is going to continue to rezip. We can now add 
the final three nucleotides. We can add the U and the G and the A, the final three nucleotides. And of course, the RNA is going to continue to break away. And the DNA in yellow is going to continue to rezip. And eventually, all the RNA is going to break away. And eventually, all the DNA is going to zip back together. And so now that we've transcribed this gene, we've turned it from DNA to RNA, well, what comes next? Well, let's focus just on the RNA. This RNA is not final. This is not finished RNA. This is what is known as pre-RNA. It has to be processed. Notice there's some capitalized letters and some lowercase letters. Now we're going to see why those are there. So near the end of transcription, there's an event called RNA processing. And in the key, I just labeled the uppercase letters to be something called exons and the lowercase letters to be something called introns. And so the introns turn out to be uh, some non-coding regions that, of nucleotides that are, are cut out and discarded. They don't code for a protein, so they're just going to be cut out, discarded, thrown away. And those are the lowercase introns. The capital letters represent the exons, and these are the coding regions. The, these are the regions of the nucleotides that actually code in the formation of a protein. So there's kind of this little special uh, uh, protein complex enzyme um, combination called a spliceosome. And it, it takes the pre-RNA and it starts reading. It starts reading until it finds an intron. And then it begins to cut out the intron and discard it. The exons are then bonded together. And the spliceosome will continue, continue, continue until it finds another intron, another set of lowercase letters. And the spliceosome will then start to cut out these introns as well. And eventually the exons are spliced back together. And now we have the mature RNA, the processed RNA. This RNA is now ready for use. So what's going to happen with this RNA? Well, let's pretend we just made messenger RNA. If this is messenger RNA, mature messenger RNA, it's going to exit the nucleus and go find a ribosome. So here's the mature messenger RNA. It's exiting the nucleus and entering into the cytoplasm. And so here's a ribosome, and here comes our mature messenger RNA. The ribosome can start to read the mature messenger RNA, and as it's reading the RNA, the ribosome is going to begin the process known as translation. And it's going to start to collect a bunch of bunch of bunch of amino acids and link them together. These amino acids will eventually make a, uh, and form a protein. Again, that's the process of translation. We're not going to go into translation in this video, but I have another video if you're curious. So notice how once transcription is over, that immediately leads to the next process beginning called translation. So there you go. I uh, hope you found that video helpful. Here's a little practice quiz to kind of practice what you learned in this video. And I hope you find this helpful. If you're in my biology class, you know, bring your answers on a separate sheet of paper. I'm happy to check your answers before school or after school one day. Thanks for watching.